Have you ever made fun of someone's grammar on Facebook or something and then realized afterwards that English wasn't their first language and you felt like a real tool because you realized they're doing the best they can with the, with the equipment they've got? Well, that's what I want to talk about today, but from a gaming standpoint. Gaming literacy. Let's get into it. Gaming literacy is something that most gamers take for granted. Uh, I have a unique story around gaming, or maybe it's not that unique. It's probably pretty similar to a lot of the older folks out there, like myself, where I was a casual gamer as a child. I had a couple different consoles. I started with an Atari 2600. Uh, I never had an NES, but I had lots of friends who did, and I had friends who had a Sega Master System, and I played a lot at their houses. Uh, but I'm not coming from a place where I have beat every retro game known to man. I've played several levels of several different things uh, over the years, and I've beat a few games. I had a TurboGrafx-16 when I was about 12 years old. Uh, but I don't really think I beat any of the games I had on the Graphics 16 I was, you know, pretty casual. I mean, I enjoyed Fantasy Zone, still to this day, one of my favorite games. Uh, I now have it on the Switch through the Sega Ages collection, and, uh, you know, it's a great game, but I can't really get past the third level without really sitting down and making a job out of it. Uh, it's just, you know... It, <laughs> I walked away from gaming, as many people did in my early 20s. Uh, I got married, I had a kid, and I got jobs, and moved on to other things. I was an avid reader, uh, I was an avid movie buff, that's how I spent my time. Uh, I didn't really play games after the 16-bit era. I mean, I did have a PS1 for a while, and one of my favorite games of all time is Parasite Eve. And another one is Final Fantasy VII, both of which I played uh, in the same summer, in around 1998, I believe it was. And uh, Twisted Metal, loved that. Gran Turismo, loved that. Uh, but again, I had maybe six, seven, eight games for the PS1 back in the day. Uh, and those were the experiences I had. I think the I, we beat Parasite Eve, myself and Cousin Mike, that you've briefly seen on the channel before, uh, you know, he's about seven or eight years younger than me, so he was about 12 or 13 years old, and I was like 20 or 21, and uh, we beat Parasite Eve, and we beat Final Fantasy VII, and we beat Gran Turismo 1, but uh, at that point, I pretty much walked away from gaming again. Um, at one point, I did have a PS2 briefly, I played Gran Turismo 3 or 4, I can't remember which back in the day, uh, and I don't really remember anything else about the PS2 really from that era. So my experience with modern style gaming was almost nil. When my son got to be uh, 13, 12, 13, 14 years old uh, in the you know, the Wii and the, the 360 era, we did buy a Wii, but I didn't really pay any attention to it other than playing some, uh, you know, Super Mario Bros. Wii. He got a 360 and a Kinect when it was, you know, relevant. And I have some memories of messing around with the Kinect, playing Star Wars Kinect and that sort of thing. I remember him playing Skyrim in, I guess, 2011 or something like that. Uh... I looked over his shoulder a little bit, but I never really touched the console. Um, I never had a PS3 back in the day. Uh, by the time the PS4 came around, that's when I was beginning to get more interested in games. At the point of 2016 or 2017, roughly, uh, this is when I really started to be interested in gaming again. Uh, the first thing I did was go out and buy a PS2 and buy a bunch of different games for the PS2 because that's kind of where I left off. And I realized that like all of these experiences were pretty much new to me other than some of the staples like Gran Turismo and Twisted Metal. 
uh, these were pretty new experiences to me, and it was several months later that I bought a PS3, and then several months later again, I bought an original Xbox and an Xbox 360, and, you know, started having these experiences that people had been having over the previous 20 years, and I realized something. My cousin Mike, who was playing with me again, uh, you know, now I'm, you know, 38, 39, uh, and I've missed 20 years of gaming, well, he kept playing. He had a 360, he had a PS3, he was good at things like Battlefield and Call of Duty and racing games, he was familiar with the Forza series and Gran Turismo 5 and 6 and, you know, things like that that I had completely missed out on. And I found the minute that I bought a PS3 and started trying to play games on the PS3, I realized that I was completely incompetent, and I was basically starting from scratch, like gaming was my second language. Uh, like, the experiences I had in my, in my youth and in my teens were basically like being in French class in high school, and you pick up a little bit of it here and there, and you carry it forward with you, but you forget most of it. And that's basically where I've been coming from for the last five years that I've really been into this. I am super passionate about gaming as a hobby and collecting games as a hobby and all of the news and all of the, you know, all of the stuff surrounding the, the gaming space. I'm super passionate about it, but I am coming at this hobby as if gaming was my second language. And it's really interesting that so many people assume, and that's where a lot, I think, of the controversy around easy modes and games and things like that really come into play. Because when you are not generally first language literate in gaming, in general, you don't recognize some of those tropes, you don't recognize some of those things that everyone else takes for granted. As I've begun to get more literate, and now I would say that I'm a pretty competent gamer over the last four or five years, or at least competent, competent enough to manage most games that I try on the normal difficulty for the most part. I do choose easier difficulties sometimes when it just makes sense to do so, to get through the game for story mode, whatever. But I feel like I'm relatively competent, but I do not feel like gaming will ever be my first language. I do not feel like I would be able to walk into a Souls game and just cruise through it. I find myself hit by roadblocks over and over and over again in gaming that I have to go to a walkthrough or a game guide from IGN or something like that, go watch a YouTube video, just to figure out how to pro progress in a game. This happens in almost, almost every game. I come against some kind of a wall where I need to have a little bit of help, whether it be from someone like Cousin Mike or Kaz, uh, you know, to give me... I remember I was super excited about Grandia uh, collection coming to the Switch, and I missed out on the limited run, so I purchased it on Steam, and uh, I started playing it, and I was having a fairly good time with it, and then it came early in the game to this part where I was supposed to find a key for a chest or something, and I was running around and running around, and no idea, talking to different people. Little did I know, you have to talk to this same person like you know, six or seven times over and over again to trigger, uh, you know, a sequence where he will guide you to the key, and then you also got to know that the key is not visible in any way, there are no hints, you have to know that you have to get down on your hands and knees and go searching around, which means you just have to be standing on j just a certain spot in the courtyard in order to trigger that getting down on your hands and knees thing, and I was completely lost, I was getting so frustrated, Kaz walked in, uh, you know, took the, the controller from me, and he beat it in five minutes, and I had spent hours trying to figure it out. So, you know, I guess my point in all this is that we need to be a little bit kinder to, you know, people who are asking for games to have an easy mode. Um, 
it's not because they're lazy. Well, I mean, it could be in some cases, but it's not always because they're lazy. It's not always because, you know, they have no skill. I have some skill, not a whole lot of it, but I have some skill, enough to get through m most games. However, you know, I need help. So I should point out that I wasn't completely away from gaming for all of that time. It's just that I wasn't gaming on consoles, and I wasn't having those kind of experiences with those, you know, story-based games that, you know, I don't have the experience with modern JRPGs, with all of the complex mechanics and skill trees and things like that. I'm used to JRPGs from the 16 and 32-bit era. So, you know, during that 10 or 15 years between the early 2000s and 2016 or 17, when I got back into console gaming, I was playing a lot of very different style games on the PC. I was playing casual games like Farmville and SimCity, RTS games like Command and Conquer and uh, Age of Empires, and a lot of, you know, different types of games than you normally see on uh, consoles. I had never played an Uncharted game, or an Arkham game, or uh, Tomb Raider, like I'd never played any Tomb Raider game ever. Uh, so, coming back into this stuff now, and trying to figure out where to start in a series, and uh, you know, not having that general literacy of what to expect, you know, when I came to the new Tomb Raider series, which I absolutely love, the new trilogy that started on the PS3, uh, you know, I, I had seen the Tomb Raider movies, so I'm familiar with the character, but I wasn't really familiar with the gameplay style. I had never played something like a Prince of Persia game or an Assassin's Creed game, uh, so I, I was not familiar with those kinds of mechanics like wall running and, uh, you know, th that sort of thing. So all of this stuff was brand, brand new to me as, you know, someone in their mid-30s. Now I've gone back and played a lot of these games and enjoyed the heck out of them. Let me tell you, some of these games are fantastic, but it was very difficult for me. And I can't thank uh, people like my cousin Mike and uh, Kaz, my son, for helping me through a lot of these experiences because, quite frankly... I never could have beaten most of these games or even got significantly into some of these games without some serious help. People don't seem to understand how far video games have come in the past 30 years. Games are such a complex medium, and for those of you who are in your late 20s or in your early 30s and you kept gaming all the way through, Gaming is your first language. You understand the rhythms of a normal game. You get into something like Horizon Zero Dawn, and you're instantly comfortable. For me, it's a brand new experience. It's like trying to watch a foreign film with no subtitles. I have no idea what I should be doing. And I'm randomly walking around trying to, like, trigger something, or, you know, trigger the next cutscene, or whatever. So... You know, while I've built some literacy now, and while I can get through games like that now, I really feel for the people who wish that games were a little bit easier. And here's how they could be easier without putting in just an easy mode. Game developers, for the love of God, there are some things that you could do to make all games better. Save points. Just put the save function in the menu. Make it super easy. Anytime, anywhere, even in the middle of a cutscene. If I want to save, let me save. Drop down a menu, hit save. End of story. Don't get cute with hiding save points at the ends of levels or, uh, you know, anything like that. Uh, just let me save whenever I want. Maps. For the love of God, people. Why, in this day and age, can we not have a map that shows me where I am, my immediate area, and a big glowing arrow pointing me in the direction that I need to go. How hard is that? Even in Breath of the Wild, we had, uh, you know, 
arrows right on the screen that would point you occasionally where you needed to go or you know in that uh, you know section going to get the master sword where you had to follow the wind well at least there's some indication of where you need to go how hard is it to put a quest marker on the map and put a little arrow over an npc's head to say talk to this guy why can i not have a map and why can it not actually be useful why can it not have arrows that point me which direction to go how hard is that you know for those of you who want to explore uh explore but yeah like i can't express enough and then you come into you know the rest of the functions of the game if you're playing a jrpg a modern jrpg or even a western rpg like skyrim you know how complex these games are getting you know i love Parasite Eve, and I've played it many times at this point because of its simplicity. Your character levels up when you get enough XP. You get a couple points here and there that you can assign to attributes. Your weapons level up, you get new weapons here and there in the map, you take them back to the police station, you take them to the guy in the basement, and he upgrades them for you when you've got enough skill points or whatever. Super easy, you know, and when you go into combat, You've got a gun. You shoot the gun. It's got a, you know, an auto-aim type thing. You, you select which enemy you want to shoot. You mash X. Shoot, 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 whatever. Take your turn. Done. Maybe you've got, uh, you know, some kind of magic ability on Y, and when it charges up, you hit that button. Good enough. Uh, you know, something like Fantasy Life, one of my favorite RPGs on the 3DS. Again, X button, swing your sword. Y button, hold up your shield. Or if you unequip your shield, the Y button becomes your magic. If you want to have a super attack, you hold down the button for a second and it charges up. Done. Uh, upgrading, super simple. Uh, you just assign points to attributes. Strength, endurance, uh, you know, skill, charisma, whatever. Uh, every time you level up, you get a point or a couple of points and you just put them where you want. Done. So simple, so understandable, and that's what I love in an RPG. And, you know, other games, you take something like an Uncharted, for example, which, God, I love that series, by the way, but I've only played the first game and part of the second so far because I've been waiting for Cousin Mike to come back because we were playing it together. But what a fantastic series. But there's so many things, you know, I had never played... Uh, a shooting game, third-person shooting game, with cover mechanics. Uh, you know, apparently that's pretty common. Uh, cover shooting is, you know, a pretty common genre, whatever, but I didn't know how to do that. I didn't have the, the literacy to really see the field and know that, okay, there's a rock over there I can hide behind, and there's somebody shooting at me from up here, so maybe I better get over here behind a tree or something. Like, I just didn't have that literacy. So he walked me through that, and now I get it, and it's fantastic. Man, I love that series. But anyways, guys, for those of you watching out there who consider yourself to be an elite gamer... Please take it easy on us old guys. Uh, please take it easy on people who don't have the skill, people who are just coming into the hobby. Uh, you know, I look at my daughter, uh, Lily. She's 15, coming on 16, and she's just starting to get into console gaming. And it's a completely different thing from playing Roblox on the computer, right? Like, you know, they're so much more complex, and she's at that same place that I was five years ago when I got into this, where... Everything is a brand new experience. She's playing games like Pikmin, and, uh, you know, it's a completely new experience. And she's doing pretty good, but she's having to figure everything out along the way. She has no frame of reference to pull literacy from. And there are a lot of people in this day and age who are just entering gaming as gaming becomes more and more and more popular, and each new console sells more than the last. So, anyways, guys... Thanks for listening to my long, drawn-out story. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button. If you would, it helps out a ton. Literacy is something you can't take for granted. If you have been gaming 
all the way through the modern generation, the PS2, the PS3, the PS4, and on, you have something that not everybody has. You have a familiarity with how games are made and the types of things that you can expect. You know, people talk about anime tropes and stuff to me. They talk about, uh, you know, things being predictable in JRPGs, and I rarely experience that myself other than maybe the amnesia trope, for example, which is in just about every game and it's pretty annoying. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, don't take for granted the literacy that you have because you have earned that and it puts you in a different position than someone like me who, although I am becoming fairly competent now, uh, I've had to struggle to learn all these things that are second nature to you. So anyways, guys, thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next video. Stay classy.